Hey guys, it's Josie. Welcome back to Cedar Creek Homestead. Well, I'm running late tonight. I know that. Y'all, please forgive me. But we had a few things happen on the farm. We had a cow go down. She actually went down yesterday, and I was out with her till late last evening working with her. And um, uh, d t today, uh, we lost her. We'd done all that we could do, and it just happens. And then... Um, Bless his little heart, little Howie has been fussy, fussy this evening. Uh, he's went through Mama, he's went through Daddy, he's went through me, Ma, and now he's back to Mom and Daddy again. And uh, he just, I don't know if he's beginning to teeth. He's um, three months old today, and he was in fairly good spirits all day today, but this evening he's 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 fussy. And so I don't know if it's his, if he's starting to teeth or he has a little upset tummy or what it is. But he's been a little bit of a challenge this evening, but uh, uh, nothing that we can't handle. And so I'm a little bit late getting to the getting to our video. So all of you that got the winter weather, how did you fare? Um, we did pretty good. We didn't get the ice. We got um, we did get some sleet. And then snow, and so it was a little slippery underneath the snow, um, but that's all gone now. We were in the 60s today, and the snow is melted except for up on the hillside. Um, it stays shady, and so there's still snow up there, but um, right now the cows aren't up in that pasture and so um, everybody's good. You, every, uh, we've got uh, more cows coming in. Uh, you know, uh, some have had calves, and so they're being moved, and others are coming in because they're getting ready to have calves. And so, you know, we've got a lot of activity going around here, uh, uh, up here close to the to the houses, and uh, it's fun to watch those babies run and play. Uh, and so, so anyway, those that's what we've been doing. We did, like I said, lose that cow. I had uh, some. Uh, over the weekend, we had a problem with our hot water tank. I know you guys think I come up with these stories to tell you, but they really do happen to me. Um, I had noticed on Saturday morning that I didn't think the water la was as hot or as hot as long uh, when I was using the water um, that morning. But then throughout the day, as I washed dishes and did other things, I didn't notice it again, so I didn't give it any thought. But then Saturday evening, Blade got in uh, the shower, and of course, he takes long, hot showers. Him and Cheyenne both do. And he got in, and he wasn't in there for just a little bit, and he started running out of hot water. So when he got out, he said, Ma, uh, he said, is something wrong with the, the hot water heater? or the?" And he said, that we didn't have... so." So I went into the laundry room where the hot water heater is at. It's in a closet in there. I don't ever get in that closet because um, I don't have any need to. All that is all that is in there is the hot water heater. And it's not been giving us any trouble at all. So there wasn't any need. So I go and open that closet door. And oh my goodness, my hot water heater, what, instead of standing straight up like this, was leaning and kind of sunk in. Well, a couple years before Howie passed away, or, or maybe just a year before Howie passed away, the hot water heater leaked. I don't know what happened. There was some kind of trouble there. And um, it flooded my laundry room floor. And so Howie had to get some parts and repair it. And I had forgotten about that, but Blade reminded me. And then, and so evidently what had happened is mobile home floors. I don't know how in the world they're allowed to do it. Put that terrible, terrible uh, flooring that if it gets wet, it just falls apart. But that is what has happened. And so my hot water heater, the floor had sagged down. It hadn't fallen through because this, you know, it has the floor joist or whatever those are called. It, it, But it was sagging down on that and my hot water heater was tilted. 
Oh, and I'll tell you, I was just beside myself. The different things that have went on lately, you know, I love being a positive person, and I love being a joyful person, but sometimes it seems like when it rains, it pours, and that's how I felt Saturday evening. I just, I went to bed just devastated, and I, there was a lot of tears on my pillow as I was praying and asking the Lord to help me. I thought, how in the world, Lord, am I going to pay for all of this damage to my floor because it's not just the closet the laundry room floor is also um, damaged and so it's gonna have to be replaced not immediately like the closet had to be replaced but anyway I thought how am I gonna pay for it and what am I you know just the 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 just the ideas that were going through my mind what if and what if we have to really be careful sometimes that we jump into it with both feet saying oh no and now we got to do this and now we got to do this and sometimes we just need to pull back and take a breath and examine the situation and sometimes Josie needs to practice what she preaches I need to calm down breathe and figure things out. So I went to bed, like I said, and prayed, and I cried, and I looked up jobs. I thought, well, I'm going to have to get a job off of the farm and, and you know, to, to have money to do these repairs and replace my floors because I have all these other things that need to be done outside on the farm. And my little problem just kept growing and growing and growing and getting bigger, and I got myself all worked up and so frustrated well, I guess sometime in the night, in the process of praying and crying, I fell asleep. And I woke up the next morning and I got up and got around and got my Sunday school or my books and my Bible and got ready to study my Sunday school lesson and and uh, turned on my turned on the gospel music and and got my coffee and things started to to look not so bad and the Lord reminded me that he was right there with me he hadn't went anywhere and that I needed to be peaceful and I needed to just take a step back and breathe and relax and calm down sometimes we pray sometimes we ask the Lord for his help and then we try to figure it out on our own like me trying to you know work out all these scenarios in my head and I got to do this and I got to do that and you know I can't really do this and I know I need to do this and I had myself all worked up into a frenzy so Blade uh, we went to church and when we got home from church Blade had a friend come over and and they drained the hot water heater and they uh, tore the got it out and tore the floor of the closet out and um, went to Lowe's and got some parts and we had to get some um, uh, plywood and do, and, and do that and then get the, you know, all the stuff that had to be done. And it all worked out. And so that's good. The hot water heater's good. The floor under the hot water heater's good. Yes, I have to still replace my laundry room floor. I have a big area in front of my dishwasher in the kitchen that also has to be replaced and those will get done but I'm just trusting I'm just resting in the Lord I don't understand it all but he does and sometimes we just have to let ourselves rest in the Lord and stand still and let him move we some you know we want to buzz all over the place and try to fix things and Sometimes we just simply need to stand still and let him move. Let him move when we have situations like what I just described to you. Let him move when there's a sickness. Let him move when there's a job loss. It doesn't mean that we're not required to work because we know that things don't work until we work. But sometimes we get in the way. We need to just step back and let the Lord speak to our hearts about what it is that we need to do. Now that brings to my mind, I'm so thankful that I have 
been preparing and looking well to the ways of my household because now with having to uh, to come up with money for my flooring and the different things that I need to do well I've prepared and so I don't have to spend money on groceries and I don't have to spend money on supplies I have those things so money can be moved somewhere else and that's a comfort knowing that we make preparations and that we also remain flexible so that the th the, the uh, finances and the things that we're going to go to one area can be moved to another area without upsetting the apple cart without totally 100 percent just blowing everything out of the water and I'm thankful for that I'm thankful that um, that God laid it on mine and Howie's hearts a long time ago to make those kind of preparations we never imagined I never imagined that I would be doing it uh, without my best friend but God has been faithful to be there with me and I know that he's going to continue to be there and continue to help me along now the storm taught me a few things uh, one, like I said we didn't get uh, all, everything that they thought we were going to we did get a good snow we got cold temperatures but our power never went out never even flickered not it didn't even you know say hey uh, that we would run and get our our lanterns and our flashlights and all those things in hand it never even did that and we're thankful for that um, we didn't lose a bunch of big tree branches we didn't lose um, it would, there was just a lot of things that could have happened that didn't and we're thankful for that but I do have some things that I learned from that some things that I want to make sure going forward that I fix one of the things that was glaring at me was after they started saying that we could get ice and we had already ha had all of our um, you know supplies laid in and we were here and the the um, sleet and stuff had already started I began to think about my animals not that I hadn't already considered the animals and their feed and their water and their all their situation but I got to thinking about me getting from the house to the barn now the cows are uh, you know our beef cattle they're out in the pastures and we do you know we we get to them with the truck with the farm trucks and the tractors and that kind of stuff but I have to get from the house to the barn to take care of uh, some of the dogs that are out there and the chickens and the poultry the quail uh, the turkey all the other stuff that's out there so as I began to think about that I realized that I had not made preparation for if we had ice with snow I could put my um, boots on and I could make it out there you know might have to walk a little bit slower but I could make it out there through the snow I was confident had no problem but I began to panic because I thought I didn't make any preparation for ice and I thought I have nothing I have nothing absolutely nothing to go on my shoes that would make it easy for me to get out there to the barn on ice and I didn't want to fall and get hurt well, th and I net and on to be totally one hundred percent honest with you, and this will just be something that I want to I want to put this out there because I don't ever want to say I'm perfectly prepared because I'm not. I'm tell I'm gonna share with you one of my weaknesses, and it was not being prepared for ice, although we didn't get it. So I never came up with the solution once we were here and once the storm started and I realized I didn't make preparation for ice as far as walking on the ice now I made preparation with um, you know if if something happened the power went out because of ice the things we could do here in the house but I failed at that and I didn't ever I never came up with a good solution and so going forward even though it's probably a pretty good chance that we won't get much more winter weather this year we could a little bit uh, next month is spring officially and then 
Um, sometime in the first part of April is our average last frost date, but um, you know, I'm not going to say we wouldn't have any snow or ice. I'm hoping that we don't. But I guarantee you that that's going to be something that I make sure is fixed before the next possible chance that we have for ice. And so I'm actively looking for something for my uh, to go over my shoes, my feet. Um, so, uh, some of you were telling me that they have things that strap over your boots and have the little, um, like the little pick thing that would pick into the into the ice and help you walk along. And so I'm going to be looking for for that. That was a failure for me. And um, But everything else worked out pretty good. Um, because we didn't lose power, um, there was an opportunity, real ample opportunity. Um, I did use my oil lamp just because I like I kind of like it. And so that works out that worked out good. I got it cleaned up, got my wick. Uh, redone and got my glow cleaned up so that's a positive I got uh, got that taken care of I did um, charge up the little Patriot solar panels and those little bitty tiny ones that I showed you and um, to to be able to charge our phones if we needed to now I'll tell you that the instructions that come with the Patriot power cells for four four Patriots the number four Patriots power cells um, it the instruction says to charge it the first time with the little cord that comes with it and with your USB port to charge it that way um, be for the first time and so I did that and um, they worked okay for me um, but I didn't have to use them I guess sometime I probably need to do a test just to make sure um, that they're going to work. I did have a subscriber say that they had them and they didn't have very good luck with them. So I'm going to test them. The light bulbs that I showed you guys once before, maybe twice before, that are the um, the emergency light bulbs that you plug into your or that you screw into your lamp and it charges up with your electric just by everyday use. And then if the power goes out, your light bulb stays on. I'll tell you about that light bulb. It's been several months now since we had a tornado. And we were out in the um, the room that's the safest place for us to be on, on the farm. We really need a storage, I mean, we really need a storm shelter. But the safest area that we can go to, we were out there. And the power went out. And I had that one of those light bulbs hooked into the, the light socket. And it came on. So, um, and it was good. It was good light. It was bright light. It was really, really uh, a good source for us. A good, a good source of light. So afterwards, when the power came back on, I decided that I was going to see what this light light bulb could do. And so it is still going strong. I have left this particular light on just to see how long this light bulb will last us. And it's probably a bit, well, it's been on ever since the tornado. Um, it's just one little light bulb. It's in my, um, in there, in this, in this particular room that we take shelter in. And I've been watching it to see um, how it acts and um, does it begin to flicker uh, anything like that and so far it's not it's been real steady light um, I uh, am going to go and get it and you th these particular lights you can also take them once they're charged uh, you take them out of the socket and have this other little piece that comes with it that you can snap onto it and it has a little hanging hook and then um, it has a little switch on the side and you can kind of use it like a uh, a little light and go f go uh, like say you went to uh, your bathroom and it didn't have any light um, you could use that and you don't and it wouldn't have to be screwed into a light socket um, it it would, could just be a little bit of an extra light for you so I'm gonna try that too um, just to cover all the bases um, to make sure that we're ready for the next storms because for us after the winter storms then those nasty old spring storms come so now that the storms are over 
and we're ready to get that all behind us. It's time to start thinking about um, the garden and getting it all cleaned up, getting this um, our seeds started. I hope you guys are doing that too, and I hope you guys have ordered your seeds. I'm seeing, um, I won't say shortages, but um, there's there's a lot of seeds that are being sold out. Um, I don't know if it's um, just because they had a certain amount, and it could be, you know, they had a certain amount for the year, and they've sold out. I don't know if it's because there's a bigger interest in people that's wanting to plant gardens and have things, but I would suggest to you that you don't wait on your seeds. If it's something that you know that you want, pardon me, I would go ahead and get them ordered and get them on their way. Now, so far, to all the different places that I have ordered, I have gotten my seeds relatively fast, and um, I haven't been disappointed with any of them. I've been disappointed on a few things that I haven't been able to get, but it's not their fault. I'm still studying uh, and and looking around, doing some studying and doing some um, investigating. I want to get uh, some seeds for jewelweed and see if I can't get some started just to have... Uh, I'm really interested in getting it and seeing if I can't make a salve for Blade. Bless his heart. I've shared with you guys. He suffers so much. He gets in poison ivy and I it that stuff crawls all over him. It don't just stay in one little spot. It moves over his whole body. And I've never seen anybody suffer so with poison ivy like that. I don't I get in it and I honestly I don't have any problems with it. But I itch a little bit on my hands if I think I've been in it. And I think it might be a um, a brain thing, a mind thing that, oh, you got in that. And so I begin to itch. And um, I think it, it's kind of like when you think about head lice, um, my head will instantly start itching if I, if I think about head lice. And so I think it's that way if I get into poison ivy, it's because I know I got into it that I itch just a little bit. But I try to keep a bar <coughs> of Thel's Napa soap at my kitchen sink. And it's real good to get grass stains out of clothes. And so I use it there at my kitchen sink because uh, my laundry is just right there. And I can do my stain removal and then just put it into the washer. So I always have a bar right there. And um, I read somewhere that it said that that could possibly help. So I usually just wash my hands real fast with that fell snap, but, and I don't have a problem. But it really could be that I'm just not allergic to it. But my poor little blade, he's terribly, terribly allergic. So I'm actively on the lookout for jewelweed seeds um, or jewelweed plants, one or the other. And so um, I'm going to keep searching, and there's other things I want to um, really get my herbal um, garden pots, whatever, um, going this year. I, I'd really like to get comfrey and different different items um, going so that I can begin to use those things. So anyway, I hope you guys are having fun planning and dreaming of your gardens. Let me know down below if there's something that you're on the search for for your garden, seed-wise or plant-wise, uh, that um, is going to be... Uh, the thing that just gets your garden season going because you were able to locate those um, seeds that you've been on the search for. Well, it's short tonight, guys. I feel like that I didn't really bring what I normally bring to you, but I just wanted to share with you my failure because I think it's important that we're honest with one another and we let one another know... I need to work a little bit more on that or I need to work a little more on that and that's one of the things I did I did that and so it yeah, all out in the open y'all know that I'm on the search for something to put on my feet in the ice storm and um, our you know keep working on our list keep going through checking a list and making sure that we've got all of our bases covered the best we can this is Josie I love you guys. I really do. And until next time, we're gone.